Hey there guys, thanks for tuning in. Sorry it's been a while since the last video. Those of you who watch regularly, all 12 of you, will know I've been moving house lately and as such I've been very busy with uh, doing all of the moving house stuff, you know, documents and that. But I'm now into the house and uh, it's very nice, thank you. Nearly finished working on the bio lab, that's my home office slash gym and you can expect a video on that very shortly. But for now, I'm going to make something a little bit short just to get back into the swing of things. Let us get reacquainted. I'm going to count down my top nootropics. Nootropics, as most of you will know, are smart drugs, uh, supplements and medications that can make you smarter or in some way boost cognitive performance in one aspect or another. It's actually pronounced nootropics, I believe, but I'm not going to say that because I've been saying nootropics for years. I read it before I heard it and most people say nootropics and frankly nootropics sounds dumb. So nootropics it is. The nootropics I want to look at today are the favourites that I use. I've made some videos on this subject before. I've talked about modafinil, I've talked about paracetam, and I've done a guide to nootropics and how they work. In all these videos I've basically said messing with your neurotransmitters is a mistake and it can lead to actually uh, decreased cognitive performance in some capacities even if it might lead to some improvements in other areas. It can also cause problems like tolerance and dependence, even good old caffeine can do that, leaving you addicted. And that might make you think, oh, he doesn't like nootropics at all, he just makes videos about them all the time. And I don't have a problem with nootropics, it's just stimulants and things like modafinil that I'm not such a big fan of. So I thought I'd talk to you about the ones I do like and the alternatives, you know, what else is out there that can give you a slight cognitive boost. But before we go into this, the caveat I want to point out is that none of these are going to be uh, like the limitless pill. None of them are going to turn you into uh, whatever his name is from Limitless or the other Limitless program that's on. These are slight improvements uh, to your brain's health, long-term cognitive benefits, mild, subtle. You're not going to suddenly see the world differently in wider um, angle view and with higher definition. If you're looking for something like that, that's not really a nootropic, it's probably some kind of drug. So instead of trying to feel weird, Look for no tree pick that makes you just feel like you, but on a good day. That's when you know it's working. So what products can do that? I'm going to show you my favorite now. So let's start off with one. You know, I said that there's no such thing as a real limitless pill. Well, this one is literally called uh, Limitless Brain. So I'm not a big fan of that branding, as I mentioned in the previous video, because it's a little bit derivative. I think they may have been inspired by the same film and TV program that most people associate with nootropics. And this is one of those stimulants. It's not what I normally take and it's not what I highly recommend, but it does have its place when you do need just waking up, boosting. I drink loads of caffeine. Um, and this is a well-made one. If that's what you're after, I like this one because there's no proprietary ingredients. That is to say that they list everything on the website, including the quantities of what you're actually getting. They're generous portions and it's a sensible um, uh, stack that they've given you here. So, like I said, this is a stimulant. It's got caffeine in it. That's probably um, what you're going to feel most. So you'll be more awake. But you know what caffeine is. This has got caffeine in it. It's also got L-theanine in it, which is a naturally occurring um, xanthine that's also found in green tea. And it has the opposite effect in some ways to caffeine in that it's um, a little bit of an anxiolytic. It calms you down and it can take the edge off the caffeine. It's one of the most popular stacks. And if you look for many of these uh, branded supplements that are popping up online, often the key two ingredients are caffeine and L-theanine, so you're going to get a, a similar experience with most of them. And it's also got stuff that boosts acetylcholine, um, it's got bacopa, uh, just generally stuff that will make you a little bit more alert and has been shown in studies to have small benefits. So it's not going to get you super wired, but it is going to snap you up and I actually do feel this one working. But like I say, I don't think that a stimulant is the way to go if you want to just generally improve your brain power. because. If you're stimulated, then it's like you're forcing your brain into a certain state, into a more awake state. And when you do that, you prevent yourself from being able to switch between an awake state and a calm state. Calm state is actually when we're most creative because then the brain has the opportunity to explore different neural pathways and connect to disparate ideas. When we're focused, we're so focused on what we're doing, we get tunnel vision, 
that we can't see alternative um, solutions. Caffeine is essentially stress in a cup, which is great when you need to wake up, but it's not great as something to rely on to give you a complete cognitive boost. If you want something that's a step up from just plain old caffeine, then Limitless Brain is one of the um, better products that fall into that category. And I basically recommend it, but not for daily use, just for when you want waking up. So what do I like to use on a daily basis? What kind of nootropics do I recommend? Well, I generally like nutrition. So things that are gonna make you healthier. I like to look at nootropics just as additions to the diet, things that are hard to get normally from your food, just to make sure that they're there and that boost and support normal brain function. Uh, vitamin and mineral supplements are something that have kind of fallen out of favour. I used to be giving them in super ted shape by my mum after dinner. But as I get older, a lot of people say, why get vitamins and minerals from your supplements when you could just get them from your diet and your body would absorb them better and they'd be available in better ratios. That's all very good and well in theory, but it is hard to get all the things you need from your diet. And, you know, with the best will in the world, we don't always manage it. And a lot of people say that you can't absorb vitamins and minerals that well from supplements. But I'm not so sure on that because, well, for starters, when I take this one, which is just one intended to boost immunity, uh, men's health, lab, body defense, I find that it actually does make me feel more awake, more jolly. It's got such a large amount of vitamin C in it. Um, how much exactly? It's got 625% of your um, recommended intake of vitamin C. And vitamin C is a precursor for serotonin, a feel-good hormone. I do feel better when I take it. Vitamin C is great for um, preventing overtraining if you work out. It's great for um, boosting your immunity to prevent illness. And if you want to know what's going to really ruin your productivity and your mental performance, then feeling ill and those pro-inflammatory cytokines are exactly what are going to do it. it. Also contains vitamin D, which may boost your sleep. It boosts testosterone. Most of us do get enough vitamin D. And it contains zinc, which is very good for brain plasticity, so they say. So in general, it's a great thing to have. And I say, I feel the benefits. And also there's a supplement called Soylent that's available on Kickstarter. No, it, it was funded on Kickstarter and people now taking it. Soylent is a supplement intended to replace your entire um, need to eat. It's supposed to contain all of the nutrition that you need just to survive. And people are living on this and they're not dying. So they must be absorbing it. I'm not saying you should take Soylent. I think that's a, probably a bad idea. But the fact of the matter is that you can absorb nutrients from supplements and so I don't know why supplements um, like vitamins and minerals have got such a bad rap when actually they do a lot of good and they don't do any harm and the other one I take from men's health and it doesn't have to be men's health I just think I find I absorb this one particularly well and I like what's in it and this one I was curious not as impressed but um, yes this one is mental focus and it's just a B complex supplement and vit B vitamins are very good for brain as well because B6 is a precursor to many important um, uh, neurotransmitters and B12 helps blood flow to the brain and they all do important stuff I mean it's not the best supplement this one uh, the choice of vitamin B12 for instance is cyo cyanocobalamin I don't know how you say that which is um, which turns to cyanide in the body if you get too much not as dangerous as it sounds but there are better sources of B12. They've chosen the cheap one, basically. And seeing as Men's Health, I think, like to position their supplements as a kind of premium brand with a price to reflect that, I'm a bit disappointed with their choice there. So I'm not saying get Men's Health, particularly. I do like the Body Lab Defense one. But I'm just saying that getting a um, vitamin and mineral supplement is actually really great for your brain. I think anyone interested in nootropics, that's really where you should start. This isn't really considered a nootropic by most people, but it certainly has nootropic properties. ZMA, that's zinc, magnesium, and uh, vitamin B6. So why A is vitamin B6? I don't know, there's probably a very good reason for it. But anyways, this is uh, just three simple minerals, but it's been shown in studies to boost your testosterone if you take it just before you go to sleep and to enhance the quality of your sleep. And of course, sleep is the best nootropic there is. If you get better quality sleep, then you wake up feeling way better. I tried this once before and I wasn't that blown away by it, but having moved house, I wasn't getting that much sleep, you know, adjusting to the new bed. And I found this probably does actually make some difference. And yeah, for now, I'm gonna stick with it. As well as increasing testosterone, zinc and magnesium are also implicated in brain plasticity. That of course is the ability of our brain to grow and change shape as we're learning. 
And seeing as lots of new neural connections are created as we're sleeping, at the very least using zinc and magnesium to boost sleep should also have a knock-on effect on our neural plasticity and help us to cement the things we've learned during the day. But I do have a problem with this because this contains a lot of zinc and so does the body defense contain a lot of zinc. Um, too much zinc and there are downsides to zinc overdose. So yeah, I shouldn't really be taking them both at the same time, which is why I don't, which means I have to pick which one I want. And I like the body lab defense a lot because I can feel the benefit and I like the ZMA. So that's annoying, which, which one do I use? I'm gonna replace this with magnesium 308, which is a type of magnesium that's supposed to be very good for brain plasticity, which I haven't tried yet, but I'll be talking about that in future. But that's something, that's a tip as well. When you're creating a supplement stack, whether it's for bodybuilding or whether it's for uh, nootropics, you just, you need to make sure you read all the ingredients to find out what's in it, because you might well be taking the same thing twice and that can lead to problems. You could cause more damage than good. Omega-3, not exactly new. Everyone knows what omega-3 fish oil is, but yeah, I just highly recommend taking it. Uh, the benefits of omega-3 in the brain are that it improves cell membrane permeability. Cell membrane is obviously the walls around the cell and they need to communicate with the other cells, the other neurons in the brain. They do this by allowing things to pass through. Permeability, of course, means that it's easier for things to pass through. So basically, the cell walls are made of fats. When you take omega-3, that fat is omega-3 and that makes it easier for things to pass through, which speeds up the communication in the brain. And omega-3 has got loads of other benefits too. Besides that, it's supposed to be good for um, testosterone as well, loads of other things. We don't generally get enough omega-3 in our diets. It's quite hard to get in our diet, especially because of the mercury content in things like tuna, which I eat in copious amounts anyways. But also because there's so much vitamin, uh, there's so much omega-6 in everything we eat. Omega-6 is used in, as a preservative in a lot of foods and it competes with omega-3. Omega-6 isn't bad for you, but the more omega-6 you have, the less omega-3 you probably have. And you have too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3. So don't take an omega-6 uh, supplement. Take an omega-3 and uh, try and eat oily fish and try and avoid um, processed meals. And if you have too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3, this may also lead to inflammation, which can cause brain fog as well as damaging your mood, possibly even leading to depression. So that's another benefit of taking omega-3. It's also neuroprotective against Alzheimer's and age-related cognitive decline, as is caffeine, by the way. So the stack I'm taking at the moment is hopefully covering many different aspects of cognitive health and hopefully leading to long-term benefits as well as short-term benefits, neuroplasticity, extra energy, and just the whole gamut. Creatine is another one like the ZMA, which is more often thought of as an athletic booster or a bodybuilding supplement. The role of creatine is to recycle ATP. ATP is the most basic form of energy. When you consume glucose, sugar, the body turns it into ATP to use it. it stands for adenosine triphosphate. This allows you to um, have a small burst of energy and you store it in the muscles ready so that you can move. Creatine allows you to recycle the ATP and thus get just a little bit more energy out of the ATP that's stored in your muscles so you can reuse it. And when you consume this, then you can get a couple of extra seconds of energy from your ATP. That's why it's useful for bodybuilders and also it improves water retention of the muscles. But for the brain, it's good because it's providing your neurons with more energy. And studies show that it boosts scores in IQ tests. So yeah, a lot, not a lot of people know that, but creatine is also a very good nootropic with no health um, downsides and all good stuff. So more people should take it, even non-bodybuilders. So those are all the nutritional nootropics, nutritional nootropics that I like that replace things you could get in your diet. Um, one more I'm interested in though that's a bit different is Siltep. Uh, Siltep is designed to improve long-term potentiation, which is the strength between different neural connections. So brain plasticity is the word that describes your brain's ability to change shape and grow new connections. And this makes those connections stronger. So in theory, enhances learning. That's the idea anyways. The stack makes a lot of sense in that all the ingredients are chosen from, um, are based on studies, but there is some uh, disagreement as to whether or not they all are in enough quantities to work in humans and to actually improve brain plasticity. There's mixed comments and reviews, and you can look at it in more detail on my website. There's nothing in here that will harm you. 
and I like the idea in theory of boosting brain plasticity a lot and that's why I also supplement with the ZMA and want to replace that with the 3 and 8. But whether or not this does that, I'm not sure. I took the whole pot and I must say I maybe felt something because when you increase BDNF, brain derived neurotropic factor, the uh, neurotropic, uh, the neurotransmitter that is most responsible for um, plasticity, you do find that it correlates with a kind of increased desire to learn and increased focus and it does correlate with dopamine which is the neurotransmitter that does those things. So yeah maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I'd like to look at this in more detail and I am uh, finding ways to more accurately measure the effects of nootropics so that's something I'll be looking at in future. I'm also going to be making a video in future all about nootropics that boost brain plasticity so it'll be like a um, plasticity stack or I call it the plasticity protocol because I read too many comics but yes stay tuned for that if you think that sounds at all interesting. And something else you might have noticed then about my nootropic stack here is that a lot of the things do double up OCD, do double up as bodybuilding supplements and of course that's partly because I'm into the gym and I like working out. Beautiful. But it's also because actually A there's a lot of crossover between things that boost your brain power and things that boost your muscle power and B I think it's great to have a stack that's combined that combines both because well that way it's just a performance stack isn't it it's not just a brain stack or a body stack and having a performance stack is cool. So yeah, a bit rambling. I know I tend to do that, but I hope you found some use there um, out of what I'm recommending here. So I've got the Siltep and the Limitless Brain, both of which I think are interesting. Limitless Brain for boosting short-term performance, Siltep for boosting brain plasticity. Very interested in that, but need to do more research. Vitamin and mineral supplements. ZMA for sleep, not essential. I'm gonna replace it with magnesium three and eight, like I say, because I'm already getting the zinc and the B6 elsewhere but it could be an interesting one for you to try if you haven't tried it before. Creatine for increased energy and muscle benefits and omega-3 fish oil for improving communication between the brain cells. Those are the nootropics I like right now and I find that this stack does boost my brain power and I've been feeling particularly productive, awake, well slept, etc. as a result of these. So give it a go if you like and also let me know what nootropics you're using in the comments or if there are any others you would like me to cover. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like this. Won't be so long until the next one now. Also, I do videos on fitness, um, bodybuilding, productivity, working online, transhumanism, technology, etc. So yeah, check out my channel um, and you can find some of those videos. Let me know what you think. Have a look at my Twitter and my Facebook and my Instagram. You can find the links down below. Talk to me in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider like, sharing and subscribing because uh, it helps me a great deal. Thanks very much for watching once more and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.